Hi, it's David here from Help at Maths, and in today's lesson we're going to be looking at column addition. And we're going to start with a problem, a real life problem. In fact, so real life it happened to me. Wilma and Willie are playing a game of catch, and Willie throws the ball too hard and smashes a window. <sighs> Oh dear, they're in trouble now. Mum and Dad aren't very happy. And so they make them pay for the window out of their own pocket money. Wilma looks in her piggy bank and she finds a whopping £12.37 to contribute to the price of the window. And Willie seems to have his hand stuck in his money jar. But that's okay, because he has £9.25 to contribute to the cost of the window as well. So they put their money together and we see how much money they have got. So now you've had a look at the problem, I want you to go away and have a go at solving it yourself first before you look at my solution. So I want you to head off, use some apparatus, do some drawings, calculations, whatever you need to do, and write down or show somebody what you would do to solve the problem. Then when you've had a go, whether you've solved it or not, it doesn't matter, head on back and then we'll show you some solutions for it. In the meantime, Willie's dad is going to come on and do some very bad dad dancing for you. Hit pause whenever you want to, head off, try to solve the problem, and then come back and we'll look at the solutions. Here we go. So let's have a look at this. We're going to do £12.37 add £9.25. Now the first thing you need to realise is you have to line these numbers up correctly. You put one number underneath the other with the digits lined up in the correct column. So the pennies under the pennies, the tenpies under the tenpies, the pounds under the pounds. In fact, if you want to simplify it a bit more, then convert it from pounds to pence. There's a hundred pennies in a pound, so you could call this 1,237 pence add 925 pence. We can add some column headings in as well. Let's add some ones, tens, hundreds and thousands so you can see where the digits go. And then the next thing you need to do is look at the first number, 1237, and we're going to make that number using place value disks. So we've made 1237. And we've done that by using 1,000 coin, two 100 coins, three tens, and seven ones. You now need to start adding the numbers with the digits furthest on the right hand side, the least significant digits, in this case the ones. We're going to add five ones. Problem is, there's too many ones for the column because you can't have more than nine digits in a column. Here we've got a row of 10 and a row of two. We've got 12 ones all together. So we have to exchange. We take our 10 ones and we exchange them for one 10. It's exactly the same value. It just looks different, but we've done it to make it easier to do our calculation. So we've still got 12 ones. It's just now we've represented it as a 10 and two ones. Now we can carry that 10 over into the tens column where it belongs. So let's see what we did. First of all, we need to write some parallel lines so that we can actually have someone to write our answer. And what did we do? We started by adding the ones. We had seven, add five. And we ended up with 12 ones, which is the same as 10 ones and two ones. And so we carried the 10 over. The reason we've written the one underneath the tens column is to represent that 10 that we carried over. So that one isn't a one, it's one 10. And it's very important to realize. Now we're going to add the tens. We've got three tens. We need to add two tens and then add the one ten that we carried. So that will give us one, two, three, four, five, six tens altogether. 
So three tens add two tens add the one ten that we carried is six tens. Now let's look at the hundreds. We have two hundreds and we're going to add nine hundreds. The problem again is we've now got too many coins for the column. If we line them up, you can see we've got a column of 10 and we've got one left over. So we have 11 hundreds altogether. So we need to exchange again. We take 10 of those hundreds and exchange it for 1,000. It's exactly the same value. 1,000 is the same as 10 one hundreds. So the value hasn't changed. It just looks different because now we can carry that 1,000 over. So let's have a look at what we did. We had 200, we added 900, and we ended up with 11 hundreds, which is the same as 1,100. We originally had a thousand in the thousands column, but now we've carried one over. When we add up the thousands, we find that we've got 2,000 altogether. And so the answer is 2,162 pence. We didn't have to convert to pennies. We could have done the calculation just as easily, leaving it with pounds if we wanted to, just like this. The algorithm works in exactly the same way. So what I want you to do now, my challenge for you today, is to create your own problems. Because you might be at all sorts of different levels to anybody else watching this video. You might be really brilliant at adding already, you might be new to adding. So you're going to choose the problem and set your own level of difficulty. If you make it too easy, it's going to be too easy. And if you make it too hard, well it's probably going to be too hard. So just set the right level for you. So what I recommend is you take some digit cards and you make some numbers with those digit cards and you decide how many digits per number. The more digits, the harder it will be. So shuffle up some digit cards and deal some random numbers like this. You could maybe had two, three digit numbers together. Or if you want to make it easier for yourself, then choose less digits. Maybe add some two digit numbers together. Or make it more difficult for yourself by adding numbers with lots of digits together. Or challenge yourself even more by having several rows of numbers. For example, three rows of numbers and add those together. In fact, when you do that, you're going to meet another challenge that I need to explain to you now because you don't always carry the digit one. Let's have a look and I'll show you what I mean with this example. So we've got 745, we're adding 92, and then we're adding 681. So we started by making the number 745 with 700s, four tens, and five ones. Now we add the ones, we've got five ones, add two ones, first of all. And then we add another one. Add them all up and you've got eight ones. Nice and straightforward to get us started there. And you write your number like before. But now let's look at the tens. We've got four tens, and we're going to start by adding nine tens. But then we have to add eight tens. Now we've got loads of tens in the column. And if we organize them into rows of 10, you can see that we've got 21 tens now. That's far too many for the column. So we're gonna to have to exchange more than once. So we take the first 10 tens. And we're gonna exchange them for the equivalent value of 100. Remember, the value hasn't changed, it just looks different. Now we need to exchange the next row of tens and exchange that for 100. And we're left with 210, which is the same as before, it just looks different. Instead of being 21 tens, it's now two 100s and one 10. But it still means the same thing, it's still 210. So what did we do? We did four tens, add nine tens, add eight tens, and we got 21 tens, which is the same as 210. So in this example, we had to carry the two into the hundreds column. 
I'll let you finish off the rest of this calculation yourself. I'm sure you'll find that nice and straightforward. And we'll have a look at another way of making it more difficult. We're going to introduce decimals now. So you can make some decimal points on your cards, split your number cards in half, and make two piles with a decimal in each pile. You can shuffle up one of the piles and make a random decimal number this time. And here we have 3.21. Then you can take the next pile, you shuffle that up and make another decimal. And here we've got 57.4. Now when you're adding decimals, you've got to be really careful you line the digits up correctly. So the first thing is you've got to make sure those decimal points are aligned. And also that the tens with the tens, the ones with the ones, the tenths with the tenths, the hundredths with the hundredths. So our first number, 3.21, has one hundredth, two tenths, and three ones. But we're also going to need the tens column here because when we add the number 57.4, the five has to go in the tens column. The seven has to go in the ones column. And the four has to go in the tenths column. We can also add a place value holder if we want to, to show that there's no hundredths if we find that easier. But then we add it up exactly like before, using exactly the same algorithm, it's exactly the same thing. So now you've seen how to add up numbers, it's over to you to have a go and generate some questions of your own using your number cards and make it as challenging or as easy as you would like. So start easy, gain your confidence with it, and then as you get better and better at it, make the numbers more and more complicated. But don't forget, you can add several rows to make it even more challenging, and you can even start looking at decimals as well. So I hope you found that useful. Um, have fun practicing adding in columns, and I'll see you in our next lesson. We're going to learn how to subtract in columns.